first, I'd like to give a shout out to MW for sending me this particular story that is coming out of Oregon. And I'm going to read to you what the title of the story, because it's coming from the Daily Mail. It says, Mexican man convicted of kidnapping and sexually abusing two Oregon women grins in court and tells their family he'll see you in hell as an emergency he'd already been deported 20 times before. Let's focus on the part where it said he was deported 20 times. Now, one part that I left out of the story involving the death of that woman, Kate Steinel, was that the Mexican man involved was deported seven, was it five times? How in the hell did he get back over after five times? Apparently, these borders aren't as strong as they claim to be, or they're constantly letting them back over. This man was deported 20 times and managed to still get back over here. Somebody is not holding down the fort with those borders. It says Sergio Jose Martinez, age 31, face was sentenced to 35 years in prison on Friday. He sexually assaulted a woman in her home and attacked another in a parking lot. Both were on the same July day, a week after he was released from jail. He had been there for interfering with police. He had also been deported 20 times. Martinez pleaded guilty to 10 counts, including sodomy and sexual assault. A Mexican man who was deported from the U.S. 20 times had been convicted of 10 counts, including sexual assault in Oregon. On Friday, Sergio Mar Jose Martinez was sentenced to 35 years in prison in a Portland courtroom after pleading guilty to kidnapping, sexual assault, sodomy, and several other counts. Martinez smiled throughout the trial, and as he left, he gave one grin parting shot to his two victims' relatives and said, see you guys in hell. The first attack occurred early on the morning of July 24th when Martinez entered the northeast Portland home of a 65-year-old woman through a window she had left open to cool the house. Wielding a metal rod, Martinez told the woman to get down on the ground where he bound and blindfolded her, threatened to murder her, and then sexually assaulted her. He stole the woman's purse and car. She called the police from a neighbor's phone, and they located the vehicle and put it under surveillance. While they kept an eye on the car, however, Martinez was stalking his second victim in a parking garage on the corner of Northeast 21st Avenue and Northeast Halsey Street. He approached her carrying a knife and made her get into her car. As he got in after her, she attempted to escape, but he was able to grab her and start slamming her head into the ground. The woman called out for help, and as a passerby approached, Martinez attempted to steal her car. He then fled on foot when it failed to start. Police called him minutes later. Two relatives of one of the victims and one of the victims herself spoke during the sentencing phase Friday, in which Martinez often grinned. A brother of one victim told Martinez, Sergio, no sentencing is enough. I'd rather you rot in hell. Deputy District Attorney Mitty Gert, the prosecutor on the case, said, We've had some very powerful victim impact statements that said it all. It was really breathtaking to hear the far-reaching consequences of violent crime, the emotional injury. Under the agreement that spared Martinez a possibly longer sentence if he had been found guilty at trial, he pleaded guilty to 10 counts including first-degree burglary, sodomy, sex abuse, kidnapping, robbery, and second-degree assault. Martinez lawyer Jonathan Sayre said his client suffers from some mental illness. Here you go. Illnesses, often such people may do inappropriate things in these situations. However, he acknowledged that a doctor had, been, had declared Martinez competent to stand trial. Martinez had been freed from jail in Portland a week before the attacks. He was in there for interfering with police and providing a false birth rate date. He was released despite a request from U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement for the Malt, Malt, not Maltnama County Sheriff's Office to hold him so the agency could take him into custody. Oregon became America's first sanctuary state when it adopted a law in 1987 preventing law enforcement from detaining people who are in the United States legally but have not broken other laws. Sheriff Michael Reese said he cannot legally continue to hold Martinez on the federal agency's immigration detainer request, but if ICE had sent a criminal detention warrant signed by a judge, he could have been held longer. He was released consistent with the orders to the court. No federal or state criminal warrants were pre present at the time he left our custody. 
However, he noted that Martinez had been deported before and has returned to commit additional crimes. It would help our community to understand how he felt, how he was held accountable by federal authorities for multiple illegal reentries. U.S. Attorney General, the evil elf, highlighted Martinez's case when he visited Oregon in September and urged local jurisdictions that don't cooperate with the federal immigration agents to reconsider those policies. Martinez is not eligible for early release due to a 1994 ballot initiative passed by Oregon voters that establishes a mandatory minimum sentences for certain crimes. After 35 years, ICE will be able to take him into custody if they monitor his release date. The attorney said by then Martinez will be 66 years old. ICE spokeswoman Lori Haley, Haley said that the agency will want Martinez transferred to his custody when he completes his sentence, so it can deport him. Just a day prior to Martinez's conviction, another man who had been deported multiple times for being in America illegally, Jose Inez Garcia Zarate, was found not guilty by a jury in San Francisco in the shooting death of a woman. That case touched off a national immigration debate. Unfortunately, after Zarate got acquitted, Martinez is now the boogeyman of the face of immigration. That just gave me an idea of how I'm going to title this video. <laughs> I'm telling you, it seems to me the Mexican community is, is getting out of control. But don't get it twisted. Black people will always be public enemy number one. Even with all of this stuff going on right now. This guy seems pretty proud for what he did. As you can tell by this picture, he doesn't care what he did. He he feels good about what he did, as sick as it was. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments about the story. Like, share, subscribe. Be sure to check out the links in the description and have your notifications turned on. 